It's a very sweet text of Luke. Not only is overflowing with diverse talents, but its members define categories. So our athletes write amazing poetry. Get to water colors and sell in mathematics. Great debaters build aqueducts and remote villages. Our commencement speaker represents this eclectic class well. He is as in depth at theological analysis as he is in front of a cross ball, loops through an all important face off. And his fingers from the guitar with the same polish he brings to the football field. But beyond this embarrassment of riches, our speaker brings a gift that is unusual, especially among so young. He has the capacity to listen and listen from the heart. He can hear what is being said to him and what is unsaid, but no less critical. Over the last four years, Mark Davis' speaker has listened well. It is a great pleasure that I introduce to you the 2009 Davis' speaker, Nicholas John Serena. things, it would not be the great school that it is. 
You can see what makes prep different from so many other schools just by looking at the quadrant in the middle of the campus. You won't find a statue of an eagle or a tire or a leprechaun <laughs> as in some kind of mascot. But if you walk in the prep squad, you will see a life-size statue of St. Ignatius Loyola. He's kneeling on the ground, and his sword and his helmet are abandoned by his side. He's holding a pilgrim staff, and he's in a position that suggests he's ready for a journey ahead. He's focused, and he's ready to give everything to God. Leaving Loyola Castle in 1522, Ignatius stepped completely out of his comfort zone. He stepped away from a life of power, a life of privilege, and he had the courage to believe that God was inviting him to reimagine himself. Ignatius had the courage to believe that he had a vocation. His statue is a constant reminder to us that while we're at Georgetown Prep to prepare ourselves for college, it is more important that we prepare ourselves for life and to accept God's call for us. When I first arrived at Prep, I was under the impression that the word vocation only applied to those who wanted to be priests. However, over the course of my four years here, I began to realize that everyone has vocation, not just priests, nuns, and brothers, and other religious. But God calls everyone. God invites everyone to see themselves in God's eyes and to believe that they have something to offer the world that no one else can give. And I can personally attest to the positive impact of this broader understanding of what it means to have vocation. Although my passion beyond the classroom has largely been based on athletics, I decided to pursue music in college. I could not have made that decision comfortably without the focus on vocations at prep. Although it hadn't been a primary focus of mine, for the majority of the time in high school at least, I knew that music